This is Detective Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama thriller film called The Babysitter's Seduction. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Late in the evening, Michelle is talking to her friend on the phone, only for their conversation to get cut short by the sound of someone opening the front door. Michelle goes down to investigate. She is greeted by nothing but silence and the ominous feeling of being watched. Being a teenager alone in a big empty house, she decides to phone the police, only to be surprised by her mischievous boyfriend, Danny. They both decide to take a dip in the pool, where Michelle seemingly drowns after jumping in. Danny jumps after her in a panic, but Michelle was just faking it as payback for his little stunt from earlier. Soon enough, the two head back to the house. Michelle checks in on the children she's supposed to be babysitting, revealing that she wasn't entirely alone. Then she rummages through her employer's closet so she can throw an impromptu fashion show for her boyfriend. While the two of them are fantasizing about living a life as grand as her employers, they're interrupted by the arrival of said employers. Michelle and Danny both hurry down with Danny sneaking out of the room. Michelle, on the other hand, quickly meets with the family's matriarch, Sally before hurrying out the door and into her other employer's car. Bill converses with Michelle as he drives her home, asking about her high school life and her plans for the future. She answers his questions politely, albeit vaguely, and drops that she's part of the school swim team. The following day, Bill meets with his friend, Detective Frank O'Keefe. He says that it'll be Sally's birthday soon and he just found the perfect gift for her. Bill expresses nothing but love for his wife and even states that they've been aggressively trying to get another child, no doubt enjoying the process more than the outcome. True to his word, on the day of Sally's birthday, Bill gifts her a brand new Jeep, a gift that Bill looks happier about than Sally does. A few days pass and Michelle is tasked by Sally to take the kids to the local country club for their extracurricular activities. Living her best life, Michelle realizes she forgot the kids' piano books and heads back to the house alone. While searching through the house for them, Bill's message can be heard playing through the answering machine where he says he's already in the airport and about to depart. At that very moment, Michelle manages to find not only the piano books but also Sally's unmoving body. Sprawled across the kitchen floor, a panicked Michelle quickly averts her eyes and calls the authorities. What was once a lovely home is now a crime scene with only one suspect. Michelle is questioned by the soft-spoken detective Kate Jacobs. But they are soon interrupted by the arrival of Bill's mother, Mrs. Bartrand. Michelle takes Mrs. Bartrand somewhere quiet to grieve, while Detective O'Keefe and Jacobs discuss their findings. All evidence points to Sally killing herself, but the circumstances of her death are still very suspicious. Bill returns home that same evening, and the detectives are quick to brief him on the latest development. The gun wasn't registered. When asked if he knew that his wife had a gun, Bill answers that she hated them. She would never have allowed a gun in the house. With the love of his life being swept away from him, Bill does little else but weep, and O'Keefe offers him a shoulder to cry on. An emotional drained Michelle is resting in her room when Detective Jacobs pays her a surprise visit. Jacobs asks her what she thinks may have caused Sally to take her own life, but Michelle says that Sally Sally looked happy to her. She had the perfect home, the perfect family, and an overall perfect life. During the wake, O'Keefe confesses to Jacobs that he has been a family friend of the Bartrands for decades. They are then joined by the grieving widower. Jacobs tactlessly opens up the topic of Sally's pill habits, saying that the woman's been taking antidepressants, which, as a side effect, may cause wild mood swings. Bill is shocked by the revelation and insists he's never seen her take anything of that sort. The mystery only thickens upon the appearance of Paul Richards. Sally's lover. O'Keefe is quick to share this with Bill, who again says he wasn't aware of Sally having taken a lover. And adding salt to his wounds, Bill is informed that Sally had plans to leave him before her untimely death. In school, Michelle's friends worry about her well-being, considering what she had witnessed. She assures them that she's fine, and when they ask about it, she says that she intends to continue working as a babysitter for Bill, much to her friend's displeasure. Bill invites Michelle to dinner, where the two catch up. Their casual conversation soon turns slightly more serious when Bill politely asks Michelle if she's still willing to be their babysitter, at least until he finds a full-time nanny. With her mind already made up before he even asks, Michelle answers affirmatively, without hesitation. Their once professional relationship slowly begins to cross the line of what socially acceptable. Michelle's presence in the house provides the emotionally distressed Bill with a sense of spousal comfort. Worried about her safety, Bill even gives Michelle one of his older cars, which compared to Michelle's current 
Night Ride is as good as new. Ecstatic, she proudly shows off her gift to her friends and family. Instead of spurring excitement, this only sparks concern from her mother and even more so from Danny, who asserts that a guy won't give a girl a new car without expecting anything in return. Back at the police station, Jacob shares her latest discovery with O'Keefe regarding Sally's case. Despite being inconclusive, she discovers that there was no gunpowder residue on Sally's fingers, essentially confirming that she didn't kill herself. O'Keefe approaches Bill with this piece of sensitive information and informs him that they'll need to investigate further considering the circumstances of the case have drastically changed. This is later confirmed by Paul, who speaks to Jacobs about the nature of his relationship with Sally. He tells the detective that Sally was deathly afraid of her husband and has been seeking ways to distance herself from him. He also describes Bill as a control freak who prevented Sally from working by insisting it's time for another baby. Paul also claims that contrary to what Bill had claimed, he knew about Sally's affair. Sally was sure he had her and Paul followed because of the things Bill told her and the way he acted. She was so frightened that she called him one day, saying that it's too dangerous to see him. Despite his proclamations of love for the late Sally, Jacob still suspects Paul for being the culprit, an accusation that he is quick to deny. Jacobs also pays Michelle a visit, where she informs the oblivious teen that Sally's case is now being treated as a murder. This confuses Michelle at first, but her distress quickly turns to worry, causing her to run to Bill to quit her job. Bill reassures a panicked Michelle that despite the detective's suspicions, all evidence still points to Sally having killed herself. He then jokingly tells her that he won't allow her to quit as she's been the best part of his life since the incident. They make plans to have dinner with the kids, only for Bill to forget about the dinner. He ends up up going on a date instead, and though Michelle acts nonchalantly about the whole thing, she's deeply disappointed with the much older gentleman. To ease her sorrows, Michelle begins rummaging through Sally's wardrobe again and tries on one of her diamond necklaces. Bill catches her just moments later, but much to her surprise, he doesn't respond with anger. Instead, he gazes longingly at her and tells her she's beautiful. He apologizes for hurting her earlier that night, and the two reconcile with a kiss. Softly at first, and their kiss soon deepens, with their hands wrapping around each other's bodies. Bill then stops himself, knowing how much of a mistake it will be if they continued, leaving behind a stunned Michelle. After she leaves, however, Bill's tone changes as he reports the incident to O'Keefe. Sounding perturbed, Bill tells his friend over the phone that he came home to Michelle, going through Sally's things and even wearing one of her dresses. O'Keefe is thankful for the information and tells Bill to stay safe. Meanwhile, Paul attempts to dig up the files for Sally's case and discovers that Bill's keeping them in his home. The only way to get to them is to do some sleuthing of his own. Coincidentally, Michelle's holding interviews for housekeepers the same day. Paul decided to drop by. Thinking quickly on his feet, Paul pretends to be a potential housekeeper and is let in by one of the children. While he's snooping around Bill's home, Michelle discovers him. She quickly kicks him out despite his efforts to explain himself. Like clockwork, Michelle runs to Bill, who attempts to file a restraining order against Paul. Nevertheless, with her newfound knowledge, Michelle confronts Bill about the development in Sally's case and how her death is now being ruled as a murder. She also adds that Paul told her that there's evidence hidden in the house, specifically the computer. Bill is quick to turn the blame on Paul and insists that Sally killed herself. So if there's anyone who's going to be arrested, it's going to be Paul. This placates Michelle's curiosity as she keeps falling deeply for Bill's charms, even willingly staying the night after Bill invites her to. But Bill and Paul's altercation doesn't end there. Sensing that Paul will only cause him more trouble in the future, Bill visits him. He brings along a little friend that's suspiciously shaped like a gun. While pointing the gun at Paul's head, Bill forces him to print out incriminating photos of him and Sally. And once he's finished, he orders Paul to delete the physical copies of the pictures. A rustling sound distracts Bill, so Paul immediately pushes the gun away from him. They struggle violently against each other, but Bill ultimately gets the upper hand. He retrieves his gun and without hesitating, Bill pulls the trigger, instantly killing Paul. Not wanting the murder to be linked to him, Bill pushes Paul off the side of the dock and with anger and frustration written all over his face, he rips apart the physical copies of the photos he had Paul print out. Once he gets back home, he wakes Michelle up. At this point, Bill is finalizing Michelle's metamorphosis as Sally's replacement and he commemorates this by gifting her with one of his late wife's necklaces. Bill proclaims his love for the much younger woman and they 
They both spend the night together, embracing each other's fears and sadness. The following day, Michelle tells her friend about her night with Bill, but said friend is quick to point out their age difference. She continues telling Michelle off, saying that her relationship with Bill is weird and creepy and that she isn't the only one who thinks that way. Their argument continues well into the following day, with Michelle feeling bitter about her friends, not understanding her reason for being with Bill. She and her friend get into a screaming match in the middle of the school, and feeling betrayed by her friend's lack of support, Michelle runs to the local country club to cool her head. There, she is approached by O'Keefe. Echoing her friend's sentiments, O'Keefe points out Michelle's odd relationship with Bill, insinuating that she was the person behind Sally's murder and that she planned to take Sally's place from the start. Michelle's mother confirms confronts her about this too, saying that what's happening is way too out of line. She confiscates the necklace and promptly returns it to Bill. Much like before, Bill twists the truth and explains that it was Michelle who wanted to borrow the necklace for her homecoming dance. But her mother just dismisses his excuses and sternly tells him to terminate her daughter's employment. Regardless of all the criticism, Michelle continues to sleep with Bill. He tells her that her mother visited him and wants them to stop seeing each other. Though Bill acts like he agrees with the notion at first, he eventually convinces Michelle to just pack everything up and live a new life with him, an idea that she unwisely agrees to. The two-faced man gives the necklace back to her, claiming that it's now back to where it belongs. It doesn't take long for Michelle to complete her transformation into being Sally, even going so far as to start wearing her clothes. O'Keefe notices this and mocks her for it, prompting Michelle to come running back to Bill. He sidesteps the topic by saying that O'Keefe was Sally's friend too, and that he's just having a hard time with how fast Bill is moving on from his late wife. Soon, O'Keefe approaches Bill with a topic and advises him to stop what he's planning on doing with her and just drop the girl. One afternoon, Jacobs visits Michelle to let her know that O'Keefe believes that she's Sally's killer. She also reveals the full extent of Bill's lies, along with the twisted truth he's been telling O'Keefe. Without mincing words, Jacobs outright tells Michelle that Bill is framing her for Sally's murder. Later on, Jacobs runs into Bill and informs him that she's filed a missing person report for Paul. Their already unpleasant conversation is cut short by a call. This is when Jacobs notices the phone that Bill is using and asks him if it was the same phone he used on the day Sally died. Bill confirms this. Bill's now acutely aware that he's been caught, so he plants a makeshift bomb in Jacob's home, and he sets it up in a way that will make the whole thing look like an accident. His plan works like a charm, as the moment the detective arrives home and turns on the lights, a massive explosion follows, knocking her unconscious. Holding on to what Jacobs told her, Michelle decides against going to Bill's house that day. Noticing her lack of presence, Bill calls her. So Michelle lies about her mother grounding her. She hurries over to her friend's home, where her friend and Danny are just about to leave for homecoming. Michelle eventually admits how much Bill's lied to her the entire time, and the two friends finally reconcile. With that, Michelle watches her and Danny leave for homecoming, with her friend pointing out that things are strictly platonic between them. In a bid to prove her innocence, Michelle rushes to Bill's home to dig up any evidence. She hurries to his computer, only to feel the warm embrace of Bill's arms. But his loving touch quickly turns sinister, as he menacingly shows her the incriminating photos of Paul and Sally together. Finally, the man confesses that he had killed his wife, and that she was planning to leave him and take his kids. With the sordid truth out in the open, Bill turns his attention to Michelle, who now knows too much for her own good. A struggle ensues, but Michelle is quickly overpowered by the larger man. He then throws her in a cage that's hidden by a trap door. Not one to stand idly by while her life is on the line, Michelle thrashes about the small cage in an effort to open the trap door above her. Meanwhile, Bill's deteriorating mind is in full display play as he talks and yells frantically to himself while trashing his place and slashing everything about with a knife. Meanwhile, Jacobs regains consciousness and help arrives. Michelle soon manages to escape and she carefully tiptoes down the long staircase. But of course, the girl would trip, alerting Bill of her whereabouts. A slow and painful chase ensues, with Bill methodically entering each room of the house, not realizing that Michelle is hiding in the master's bedroom. There she fashions a wire hanger as a weapon. The once lovers soon come face to face. Bill taunts her, and all looks lost for Michelle, only for her to lunge at him with her weapon. She quickly runs past the deranged and injured Bill, who wastes no time chasing after her. Michelle finds herself on the roof of the building, 
and with no option left at her disposal, she jumps off and into the pool, with Bill following behind her. By the time Bill reaches her, Michelle is nothing but a floating body in the water. He checks on her to make sure that she's really dead, but Michelle suddenly springs back to life and drags Bill down to the chlorinated water. While struggling against her, Bill drops the knife he's been carrying, giving Michelle, a swimmer, the perfect opportunity to snag it off the bottom of the pool. And without an ounce of hesitation, she stabs Bill in the back, but he survives the attack. Suddenly, the poolside is surrounded by the police force, with both Detective O'Keefe and Detective Jacobs present. Just when it looks like O'Keefe is siding with his longtime friend, he shoots Bill instead, finally ending Michelle's nightmare. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.